Well, welcome to the International Word Center for another good and glorious time in God as we begin to study, meditate in, teach his word in such a way that we all come to the knowledge of the truth of who God is, what he has said, who Jesus is, what he has done, and also what God has said about you and who you are and what you can do. So if you're ready to t go down this path with me, we're going to get into a word of prayer. But we also always at the beginning of our teachings, remember to give thanksgiving to God. Uh, it's when you become thankful and grateful for all God has done is you increase your capacity to receive more. It it's sort of like the money test. God doesn't give more to a stingy person because stinginess is akin to greed and covetousness, covetousness. <laughs> I think I said that right, but we're going to move on. It's, it's akin to that because you're putting money as your source in place of God. You're putting wealth as your security, what's going to take care of you, what's going to protect you, what's going to help you or keep you healthy or give you a place to live. Never let money or possession take the place of God. And one of the exercises that God gives us spiritual or a spiritual discipline is to learn to be a giver, to honor God first. And we honor God with our finances. It's putting money and possessions and wealth, which God knows. And Jesus said, where your treasures are, that's where your heart will be. The core of your being will go after the things you treasure. So God, through the dis disciplines of giving, of honoring him with the tithe, Amen. It disciplines your heart to put him first. Whereas your, where your treasures are, that's where your heart's going to be. That's what you're going to love. So when you give it to God first and honor him with a tenth of all your increase, and then when you continually learn to be generous and be a generous giver, you are signifying before God and all the earth and all the hell that you do not love money and money doesn't have you but it's all right for you to have money. And when God sees a person like that and sees he looks on the inside, not the outside, he sees your heart is a genuine honorer of him and a giver and generous. He'll pour it out on you. He'll give you more than you have room enough to receive. And he, cause he'll know that he can trust you to continually put your trust in him and not in your possessions. So on that note, I wasn't planning on preaching a little offering sermon there, but don't, re don't forget, to donate, you can go to our website at iwordcenter.org or iwordcenter.church, and there's a donate page. And I say that because we do need your support. It takes money to do the things we do. Uh, and as we get back into normal meetings, uh, we're going to be giving bigger events and doing more with the church. Uh, we're going to be inviting more ministers in to grow up the body of Christ uh, in the local area, but we also then put it out international. Uh, Primarily right now using the internet, it immediately goes across the ocean when we upload these teachings. So help us help you help us help others by giving uh, generously to the ministry. But more importantly, we offer up thanksgiving to God today for all that he's done for Helen and I. Uh, here at the International Word Center Ministry and all the church members and partners. We thank God that he continually is faithful and he always does what he says he will do. Don't let anybody let you get you into not believing that or doubting that. No matter what you see, feel, or hear, uh, God is always faithful. If he said, if you confess Jesus as the Lord of your life, he'll save you, you'll get saved. If he said by Jesus' stripes you were healed, you will and can receive healing. If he said, if you give, it shall be given back to you, amen, it shall happen just like God says it. Amen. He's a God of his word. Amen. He always does what he says he will do. He always brings to pass what he promises. So God, we thank you for your love, your mercies, your grace. We thank you for your provision and protection. We thank you for your wisdom, your direction, your correction. We thank you for your love in Jesus name. Well, let's get in the word today uh, and uh, get into our continual teaching along the line of being born again. I'm just prompted to, again. Let me pray for those who have given. I'm not, I can't pass it up. Those who have given to the ministry or given to any righteous cause. Let me pray this prayer over you. In other words, I'm going to ask for God's will to be done in your life because you have been a giver. 
And God said, when I ask anything, or you ask anything according to his will, we know he hears us and we have his, we have the desired petition we ask. That's first John 5, 14, if I'm not mistaken, but get your hand, grab, grab a hold of something that represents your finances, whether it be a purse, wallet, check, checking, checking, checking book, credit card, debit card, whatever it might be, and just hold it up before God as a sign, a point of contact that you're standing in reception of the answer to this prayer I'm about to pray. So let's pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I ask that you would pour out today a special blessing financially upon those who have given to further your righteous causes here at the International Word Center and other parts of the body of Christ. I ask God that you would do a suddenly for them and cause finances to flow freely like water into their hands. In Jesus name, amen. All right, believe you receive that and look for God to do something. It can come in many ways. You can get a promotion, you can get a new job, you can get debt canceled, you can find that best deal, you can find a house that was selling for 300,000 that all of a sudden has been marked down to 100,000. God can do it a hundred and million one ways and even more. So expect, just expect God to do it, not how he's gonna do it. God will take care of the rest. He is the one that makes it happen. You don't have to try to figure out how to make it happen but God is the one that brings it to pass. Amen. So let's open up with a word of prayer as we continue along the line of teaching about born again. Have you been born again? I hope you have. If not, go back and listen to the other series, uh, other teachings along this line, because being born again is so crucial in being able to live the way God wants you to live. Uh, as we refer to a quote by uh, Charles Finney, a preacher of many years ago, he said that he wonders if a lot of people, and I do too sometimes, a lot of people that go to church, if they ever got born again, or even was preached that you should be born again. A lot of people sometimes just hear a message that they need to just uh, say the sinner's prayer or say the, the, the prayer after me. I believe that Jesus died, rose again, etc. But it's so much more than that, that they need to be expecting. And how can they have faith unless they've heard what God has said? So it's the preacher's responsibility to preach the truth, to preach the gospel to people so that they can have faith for what God wants to do. And God, not, God does not just want you to be forgiven of your sins, which is wonderful. God doesn't just want you to go to heaven, which is awesome. But God wants you to receive the power of the Holy Spirit to change you into a whole new person. So with that, let's pray. Father, in Jesus name, we just come boldly before you and we ask for your help today to comprehend, to understand, to teach your word in such a way that it stirs up a live faith in us so that we can re so that we can receive all that you have for us. I ask God that you give me the words to say and give us ears to hear and hearts to comprehend in Jesus name. If you agree with me, say amen. Picking up where we just left off on the introductory, God wants you to receive the power to be born from above. Amen. Born again is a key truth in the gospel. There's repentance. There's forgiveness of your sins. There's being born again and there's being baptized in the Holy Spirit. And that's not all, but those are some key components that you need to have faith for and receive from God so that you can live the way God wants you to live victorious, overpowering all the powers of darkness, overcoming the world, the flesh and the devil. But if you don't know truths that you need to have operative in your life, you can't do it. You can't do it apart from God. And the things that we're teaching in here are foundational truths. But the Lord put it on my heart that some people struggle to live the Christian life. They think it's too strict. They think it's too hard. It's impossible because they see themselves just as mere men and women with evil tendencies or with desires that the world is doing. And it's got to be OK, but they want to hold on to this going to heaven and God can help me when I need his help. But but it's it. It's more than that. It's not just going to heaven and being forgiven of your sins. It's becoming part of God's family. Now, I know those phrases are, uh, are kicked around a lot in churches, the family God, the children of God and that type of thing. But it's not just mere words. It's truth and it's a reality spiritually that you should be born again 
from above. Let's read our foundational scriptures as we get into today a subject that I believe the Lord, I don't know if this is the last uh, part of this series, but there's one piece of the whole series of Born Again that we've been leading up to and building up to since three or four weeks ago, I believe this is the fourth uh, uh, session on being born again, is we want to talk about it today, but we needed to lay the foundation to get to where we are today. And we want to talk about sons of God, that the Bible says in so many different scriptures in the New Testament that you are, when you get born again, when you get saved, you are a son of God. You say, well, well, I'm a lady. We'll get to that. The Bible talks about sons of God. Some translation substitutes the word son with the word children of God. Well, we're going to get to that. So hold on, because you need to understand who you are, who God sees you are, what God has made, made you to become when you make Jesus the Lord of your life. When you believe Jesus died in your place and God raised him from the dead, there's something happens. It's called salvation. It's called being born again. Amen. Go to John, the third chapter, uh, one of our foundational scriptures. Uh, John third chapter, beginning at the third verse, it says, it'd be good to go back and read this whole chapter in context, but this, this is kind of just our foundational truths that we've been building everything we've been talking about with the help of the Holy spirit In verse, uh, three, John three, it says, Jesus answered him. I assure you most solemn, solemnly, I tell you that unless a person is born again, a new from above. He cannot ever see, know, be acquainted with, and experience the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said to him, how can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter his mother's womb again and be born? You see here, Nicodemus is judging this statement from a natural point of view and not from a spiritual point of view. And that's one of the main points of this study are this teaching of born again, that even in church and in preachings and teachings, we begin to naturalize, make spiritual things fit into our natural thinking. But we cannot do that. We need to read the word of God with our spiritual eyes open. And what is that? That's faith. We must read it exactly what God is saying. Jesus is telling Nicodemus, you must be born again. So Nicodemus goes on to say in verse five, Jesus answered, I assure you most solemnly, I, I, I tell you, unless a man is born of water and even the spirit, he cannot ever enter the kingdom of God. What is born of from the flesh is flesh of the physical is physical. And what is born of the spirit is spirit. Marvel not, do not be surprised, astonished at my telling you, you must all be born anew from above. If you want to be in God's family, you must be born again. If you want to be in God's kingdom, operating in earth the way he wants you to operate, live, prosper, walk in health, uh, defeat the devil, etc., you must be born again. If you want to go to heaven and live with God in eternity, you must be born again. You must be born anew from above. Amen. So the question I want to ask you, we've asked it before, but it bears asking again that you need to make your election and calling. Sure. The Bible say the question you need to ask yourself, according to the scriptures, not according to a church or denomination or your, your parents or your grandpa or whoever, but according to the word of God, have you been born again? Again, in second Corinthians, the fifth chapter, 16 through 17, it says, this is how you can tell if you've been born again, uh, you don't have to run down no pews, jump over no aisles. Oh, so I mixed that up. Did it? You don't have to run down no aisles or jump over no pews, but you'll know as Andre Kraut said years ago, you'll know when you've been born again. You change, you become a new creation. Old things pass away and behold, all things come new. Second Corinthians 5, 16 through 17, it says, consequently from now on, we estimate and regard no one from purely a human point of view, from the flesh in the natural, in terms of natural standards of value. No, even though 
we once did estimate Christ from a human viewpoint as a man. And some people today still see Jesus just as a good man, a good prophet, some good philosophies and some good wisdom. But it goes on to say, uh, yet now we have such knowledge of him, Jesus, that we know him no longer in terms of flesh. We know him no longer as just as Mary and Joseph's baby and, his, and you know, et cetera, uh, from Nazareth. Uh, but we know him as the Messiah. We know him as the Christ. We know him as the anointed one. We know him as the son of the living God. The word became flesh and dwelt among us. In verse 17, it says, therefore, if any person is in Christ, are you in Christ? You say, how do I get in Christ? You get in Christ by believing in your heart that he died in your place for your sins and was raised from the dead and is living evermore at the right hand of the father. And the Bible tells us in Romans, the 10th chapter, if we believe that in our heart and confess it, you got to open your mouth and say what you believe. It says, if you are in Christ, the Messiah, the anointed one, he is, you are, I am a new creation, a new creature altogether. The old previous moral and spiritual condition has passed away. Behold, the fresh and new has come. You say, what, what are you talking about, brother? The word is saying when you get saved when you make Jesus the Lord of your life, believing he died in your place and believe God raised him from the dead. If you accept that sacrifice of his shed blood as the payment for the penalty of all your sins, you are made right with God. Yes. Yes. You're forgiven of your sins. Yes. But so much more, you become a new, you become born again. You become a creation that didn't exist before you did that. You become a son of the living God. Woo. Glory to God. I'm getting ahead of my notes, but I'm going to be led by the Holy Spirit because Romans says that in Romans 8, it says many that are led by the Spirit of God are the sons of God. You say, what are you talking about there? The Bible lets us know one of the attributes of a son of God is he don't do what he wants to do. He follows the father's lead. Come on. He's a submitted uh, son and child, obedient, honoring. He does what the father tells him to do. Jesus was our example and his, our prototype of how to be a son of God. He said, I only do what I see the father doing. And I only say what I hear the father saying. You're not your own. When you get born again, you're God's, you belong to him. Uh, where you want to live, you need to acknowledge him in all your ways, where you want to work, who you want to marry, who you don't want to marry, uh, what you should give, where you should go, how you should dress, what you should watch, what you shouldn't watch. Come on, you in his household. And I used to say this when we used to counsel people, Helen and I, my wife, we used to counsel people and they would ask sometimes, well, I'm raising these kids and they want to go here and they want to do that. They want to go to movies that really I know ain't right. They want to go partying. You know, so I, I, you know, there's so many standards have been lowered because it's been quoted as being religious. But I submit to you, my brother and sister, not going into a sinful setting or living like the world has nothing to do with being religious. It has a whole lot to do of what nature you have, if you've been born again and whose family you belong to in God's household. And as I was saying, we would counsel parents sometime. What you need to do is just tell your young children, your teenagers, whatever age they are, we don't do that in this house. We are a holy house. We live before almighty God. We don't care what the house across the street is doing in our house. This is how we live according to the word of God. And that's what God is saying to us today. If you're his child, there's certain rules in his house. And as long as you live in his house, you got to abide by his rules. It might sound tight, but as they used to say in the old day, it's tight, but it's right. And it'll give you the happiest, most wonderful, most joyous, successful life you could imagine. But let's keep reading here. Uh, and let's go to John, uh, first chapter. And here's what we're, we're diving in today into the subject that I believe the Lord put on my heart. We want to talk about, and that's being a son of God and John one, uh, beginning at the 10th verse. And this is in the amplified. It says, but to as many as did receive and welcome him, welcome Jesus. He gave the authority the power, the privilege, the right, the ability to become the children of God. Now in King James and some other translation, it says the son 
of God. That is to those who believe in, adhere to, trust in, and rely on his name, who owe their birth neither to bloods, talking about natural birth, nor to the will of the flesh, that of physical impulse, nor to the will of man, that of a natural father, but to God, they are born of God. We said it last week and it bears repeating today. When you look on things on the outward by the flesh, you will not get the revelation or the truths you need to have confidence or faith in God the way you need to, to be able to receive from him what he wants to give you. If you judge Jesus wrong and only consider him a good man, a good prophet, did some good deeds, etc., and you don't judge him the way the Bible says that he was born of God, not by human impulse, but the Holy Spirit came into Mary and he was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit without any man involved. If you don't judge Jesus this way, you can't receive him. You can't receive salvation. You have to judge him according to the word of God by spiritual uh, uh, insight. And that comes by hearing the word of God. It's called faith. Faith is the ability to perceive those things not revealed to our five senses. Faith is the ability to give you to see or perceive spiritual things. Amen. God is saying to us through this teaching, born again, that we can no longer allow ourselves or others to judge us wrongly because it will breed a lack of faith in what God has said about us, of who we are and what we can do. Many feel they cannot live without sinning. Many believe they can't live without sinning. It's impossible. Many believe it's okay to live in the world and be like the world when it comes to wrong thinking, wrong ideologies, wrong philosophy, come on, and still be okay with God. You can't. You got to do things God's way. And God has said, you must be born again. When you get born again, you don't want to do those things. You want to live the way that pleases God. You become his child. Let's talk about that a little bit. Sons of God. Let's see what the word of God, the Bible, the inspired word of God. If you don't believe the Bible is inspired by God and it's him talking to you, you got a bigger problem. You need to ask God to help you, help you, help you. Come on. You need to get on your knees and say, God, all I want to know is truth. That reminds me when I first got born again, I didn't have much teaching. A uh, young man, you know, 18 years old and the church that I was going to, I was away at school and college in Michigan. And with this church I was going to, you know, I didn't know no better, just got born again. But they weren't teaching anything from the Bible. It was all isms and schisms. You know what I mean by that. My opinion, my main up, made up stuff, things that came to me in the night with no basis to the word of God. There's a lot of spiritual things going on, but it wasn't God, even though it was clothed in and said it was God. And the name of Jesus was thrown around. But there's a lot of deception going on. So what I'm saying after about a year, I got away from there and kind of, and not kind of, I drifted back into a sinful lifestyle. And then one day I woke up and somebody's praying for me. I know my sister and brother and, and family. I woke up and said, I need to serve the Lord. So I made it a 180. I repented. I changed my way of thinking for the good. I changed my action and I started going in the opposite direction I was, not living a sinful lifestyle. But, but, but the point I'm making or the Holy Spirit is making through me is that I was praying and I heard from God, not an audible voice. These thoughts came up and I knew they were from God, the way what I was thinking. Uh, the thoughts came up and said, humble yourself. Don't try to figure out what was good and what was bad from your past. Just denounce it all. Start over like you don't know anything and just cry out for truth. God, show me truth and I'll submit to it. And that's what I'm saying to you today. If you've got some wrong teaching or some wrong believing in there somewhere that doesn't line with the character of God, the nature of God or the word of God, you need to just throw it to the side and humble yourself before God and say, God, show me truth and I'll submit to it. And he will. It says he that humbles himself before God, he'll get more grace. And grace is synonymous with the word of help. God will help you. He will lead you. He will guide you. He'll give you insight. He'll give you revelation. He'll give you understanding. 
of his ways of doing and being right. So in Mark, the 12th chapter, the 24th verse, it says, Jesus said to them, is this not where you wander out of the way and go wrong? Because you know neither the scriptures nor the power of God. Now, you got to understand the context of what Jesus has said here. It was some religious folks trying to catch Jesus in some kind of cat, you know, trying to catch him up so they could point the finger at and, and say, you're not a God. And they came with the scenario of this um, brother having a wife and dying and not having children. And the custom back then was that if a brother died and didn't have children and had a wife, it was the duty of the next as the as the next oldest brother to marry his wife and take her in and have children. And they went on to say that there were seven brothers and none of them had children and they all died. And they say, well, whose wife is she going to be when they go to heaven? So verse 25, it says, for when they arise from among the dead, men do not marry, nor are women given in marriage, but are like the angels in heaven. And then in Galatians 3, verse 26 and 28, it says, for in Christ Jesus, you are all sons of God through faith. For as many of you as were baptized into Christ, into a spiritual union and communion with Christ, the anointed one, the Messiah, have put on, clothed yourself with Christ. There is now no distinction, neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither slave nor free. There is not male and female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. The point I want to uh, underline in those two scriptures that the Bible has given us some insight and revelation that as we're spiritual beings and when we go into the spiritual realm, no longer in these physical bodies, uh, which we call separation from the body, we call it death. Uh, we are going to be given new bodies, but they're going to be glorified. They're going to be spiritual component, not physical like these bodies that are mortal. They're going to, it's going to be immortal. They'll never perish. They'll exist forever because in the spiritual realm, everything ex exists forever. Even people that die in their sins uh, uh, exist forever. They, they just don't exist where God is. And where God is, that's the only place it's going to be worth being. I'm just saying, <laughs> okay? Uh, but it goes on to say, uh, those scriptures are bringing out this truth that in the spiritual realm, there's not husband and wives. Uh, and in Galatians, there's not male or female, like we see it or view it. And what I'm, I'm saying is for this purpose, because as I continue in this teaching today and maybe in the future, I'm going to be referring to us, whether we male or female, and that is the only two genders uh, that God made, <laughs> uh, male and female, is that we're going to be referring to us all as sons. And that's a spiritual revelation that we're all sons of God. Are you listening to me? So just know that I'm saying that because we're not talking about us from the physical side where we are different genders, different sexes, a male and female. But in the spiritual realm, we become like angels in the truth or the, the fact that we not, we're not a different sex or different gender because that ceased to exist. We become sons of God. We are sons of God now spiritually. That's enough of that. I think you got it, but it's, I'm saying it so you can wrap your mind around it that when I say you're a son of God, that you don't think male. Or when I say you're a son of God, you don't think not me, I'm a female. We are all sons of God, or children of God. But the word son is more important than children. That word son has a stronger connotation of who you are in Christ. You are God's offspring. You are his heir. Come on. You are the one that can continually propagate or continue to increase or give birth, if you will, to more sons of God by the preaching and the teaching of the word of God. Amen. John, the first chapter, uh, we read it early, but it bears repeating uh, the 12th verse. It says, but to as many as did receive and welcome him, welcome Jesus. He gave the authority, the power, the privilege, the right to become the children of God. That is to those who believe in, adhere to, trust in, and rely on his name. 
In the King James Version, it says the same thing in these words. It says, but as many as received him, Jesus, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. When you see yourself as a son of God, come on, come a little closer, put your ear to the speaker so you can get this, cut out all distraction because this is a key statement that you need to hear and not be pondering on something else. Listen to me, listen. When you see yourself as a son of God, you no longer see yourself as a mere worm or a sinner saved by grace or just a church goer. When you see yourself as a son of the living God and when you see yourself as Jesus's brother, glory to God, you begin to see yourself as God sees you. You begin to see yourself being able to do what God says you can do and be how God says you can be. You say, well, what, is, what is that? Jesus says, the works I'm doing, you will be able to do also. It'll be an easier step in faith for you to believe you can cast out a devil, where you can preach the gospel and see captives set free, where you can speak to demons and they flee, where you can lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Because you're not doing it in your own strength or power, but you're doing it as a son of the living God. And he has placed in you, if you've been born again, the Holy Spirit and all his ability is residing in you, just like Jesus. Jesus didn't come on planet earth as a God and did what he did. He was a man. He was tempted like we were, but did not give into it at all. Not once. He was filled with the Holy Spirit and he went about doing the works of God, yielded and led by the Spirit of God as a son of the living God. And we too, my brothers and sisters, when we get this fresh revelation of what and who we are, in God, by faith, we are sons of God. When you get born again, when you get saved, you need to go back and make sure this happened to you. You say, how do I know? You change. You change. You know when you change. Come on. You know when you change. You know when you change. Nobody will have to tell you. Uh, so we need to stop allowing the world and religion and wrong, well-meaning people, but wrong in what they're thinking and believing <clears throat> to define us, <clears throat> excuse me, to define us and get us into this wrong thinking and wrong believing where we're complaining about how weak we are and why I'm nothing special. Uh, no, you are special. If you've been born again, you're a son of the, it don't get any special than that. It's time to start laying claim to being a son of God. You do it by faith. Come on. And you get you get into the word of God like we're doing now and meditate on it. Think about it. Speak it to yourself until you get persuaded. And it'll cause faith to connect to the truth. You will perceive you'll see things that are not revealed to your five senses as being real. You'll see yourself as God sees you, that you're his offspring. You have his DNA. You have his nature. And as we talked about it last week, you get to partake of his divine nature. And as we said last week, your nature is what defines you. A bird's a bird because of its nature. A dog is a dog because of its nature. A sinner is a sinner because of its nature. But a righteous man and woman is righteous because of their nature. And that nature that you get imparted to you when you get born again is the very nature of God. You become his son. You become his child. Somebody say amen to that. Amen. That same explosive, dynamic, phenomenal uh, authority and power that was in Jesus is inside you. If you've been born again, say I'm a son. Say it again. I'm a son of the living God. So stop laying claim to your family's genetic problems. Quit identifying yourself with, with who you was born or what race you was born from. Quit uh, uh, taking sides that I'm black, I'm white, I'm Chinese, I'm Indian. No, when you get born again, forget about the physical side of you. Quit judging yourself after the outward man and begin to judge yourself by the inward man. And if you've been born again, you're a son of God. There's no more Greek. There's no more Jew. Come on, there's no more male, there's no more female, there's no more slave, there's no more free, there's sons of God. Come on, you, you get rid of the fact that what the world talks about, that you have a, uh, an inherited sickness, you know, comes down to, because you're chill, you know how do doctors ask you, uh, did anybody have hard trouble in your family? 
it's that that stops because you're in a new family. Uh, dysfunctional behavior, disorder, hang, hang ups, curses, or any other negative thing that was a part of your life before you made Jesus the Lord of your life and you got born again, no longer exists if you believe the Bible. The old person no longer exists. All the stuff that was tacked on to your natural uh, uh, birth no longer exists. Come on, you've been made brand new. You're son of the living God. God is your father. Jesus is your big brother. Lay hold of this new identity. Adjust your thinking to reflect who you really are. Come on, say it again. I am a son of God. If you've been born again now, I am a son of God. I am a son of the living God. Amen. Look at Galatians as we get ready to close. Just got a few more scriptures I want to read to you about being a son of God and kind of give you just a quick glimpse of what that looks like. That could be a whole six, seven, eight weeks of uh, study just talking about what we are as sons of God. But I'm going to give you a few scriptures. There are many more that you can go and read for yourself and meditate on so that you can get a new uh, uh, picture that you can lay hold of uh, this new identity that God has given us through Jesus Christ. In Galatians, the fourth chapter, uh, beginning at the fourth verse, uh, out of the Amplified, it, it says, but when the proper time had fully come, God sent his son born of a woman, born subject to the regulations of the law to purchase the freedom of, to ransom, to redeem, to atone for those who were subject to the law that we might be adopted and have sonship conferred upon us and be recognized as God's sons. Now the book of Galatians is being written uh, primarily to the Jews, but the truth that we see here is that when we make Jesus the Lord of our lives, we get conferred on us. In other words, we, be give, we are given the privilege. We are an adopted. We become sons of the living God. In verse six, it says, and because you really are his sons, God has sent the Holy Spirit of his son into our hearts, crying Abba. That's the word uh, in Arab language that just means father. Abba, father, father. Therefore, you are no longer a slave, bond servant, but a son. And if a son, then it follows that you are an heir by the aid of God through Christ. Amen. You are a son of God. The word of God in many places, I'm reading a few today. God has said, when you make Jesus the Lord of your life, that born again experience is not just some religious saying. It's a literal truth that you get born again. You have, the Holy Spirit comes in, regenerates you, takes the old sinful nature in your spirit, who you really are, your spirit in a body. He regenerates it. He makes it new and gives you the nature of God, a righteous nature, a nature of a child of God, a son of the living God. And one thing they say, well, what does a son look like, a son of God? In Ephesians 5 and 1, it tells us, therefore, be imitators of God, copy him and follow his example as well beloved children imitate their father. We constantly see uh, little uh, children, especially well, sons and daughters, but sons in particular will do and imitate their dad. They cross their legs, they cross their legs. So that's why he, father, you better make sure you're doing what you want your children to do. That old cliche or saying, don't do as uh, don't do what I'm doing, do as I say, don't doesn't fly. Children copy you. Children imitate you, parents. And God is saying through his word here that we as his children should be imitators of him. And what does God do? Let's read some word. and It tells us plainly what God does. If we want to see how God is and what he does, Jesus was the expressed image of God on planet Earth. Go read the four Gospels. However, Jesus is acting and responding to situations and circumstances. That's how God is. And that's how we should be. In 1 John, the third chapter, beginning at the first verse, it says, Behold, what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us that we would be called the sons of God. Therefore, the world knoweth us not because he, it knew him not. Beloved, now are we sons of God, and it does not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, talking about Jesus' return, we shall be like him inside and out. 
Amen. We're already like him inside. For one scripture says, so as he is, so are we now in the earth. For we shall see him as he is. Verse three. And every man that had this hope in him purifies himself, even as he is pure. Whosoever committeth sin transgresseth also the law. For sin is the transgression of the law. And you know that he was manifested to take away our sins. And in him, in Jesus, is no sin. Whosoever abideth in him sinneth not. Whosoever sinneth has not seen him, neither knows him. Little children, let no man deceive you. He that does righteousness is righteous, even as he is righteous. He that commits sin is of the devil. For the devil sins from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. Whosoever is born of God does not commit sin. For his seed remaineth in him, and he cannot sin because he is born of God. I submit to you, if you're having struggle with sin and you're practicing sin, you say, you mean to tell me if I sin, I'm not born again? No, 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 no. This scripture in certain translations kind of amplifies it and brings it out a little bit more. It's talking about those who practice sin and, and, and just do it on a regular basis. But as a child of God, we can't, you, as, when you're born again, you can't, you don't like sin. You don't want to sin. You want to please Father God. Uh, I'll give you this example, what the scripture is saying. If you say you work somewhere, but they only see you there once or twice a month, you don't work there. <laughs> you don't practice going there. But if they see you at work, you know, 360 days a year and you miss one day, it, it ain't you. You no longer work there. You know, there's a reason you were out. Sometimes you do fall. You don't have to. You don't have to choose to sin. But sometime out of ignorance, sometime out of willfulness, which is not a good thing. You may sin. You do not have to sin. No longer has dominion over you, but it's a lack of faith that causes people to easily get drifted in and pulled into sin. That's a lack of faith. Because when you see yourself the way God sees you, who you are, you rise up like a bold lion and you roar back at the devil. You roar back at temptation. You tap into the power, the grace of God, and he gives you the ability, as James 4 and 6 said, he'll give you more and more grace to resist every evil tendency of this flesh that we live in, this body, because the body didn't get saved. Your mind and your body does not get born again. It does not get recreated. Only your spirit, when you get born again, when you get saved, you have to put the flesh, the physical makeup of you, you have to put it in subjection to the spirit part of you and you have to renew your mind. Come on. That's just a little sidebar. But let me finish reading this in verse 10. It says in this, the children of God are the sons of God are manifest and the children of the devil. Whosoever does not righteousness is not of God. Neither he that loveth not his brother. So what I'm saying to imitate God, one of the key components is living righteous, is living holy. God said in another scripture, I think in first Peter it says, be ye holy as I am holy. Holiness is not necessarily what you wear, uh, uh, where you go or don't go. Holiness is character. And when you got the character of God, you don't go certain places and you don't are not motivated to dress certain ways. Somebody say amen to that. You ladies and you men, some of you dress and follow after the world's way of doing things to be seductive. You, that don't work in the kingdom of God. Sons of God are not trying to be seductive. Amen. Uh, let me get off that subject before I get in trouble. But sons of God, they go to work every day. They don't just go to work today. They live the way God says they live. They practice walking and living in righteousness. They walk in holiness. Amen. And you've been given the power to do it. It's not in your own strength and uh, uh, Philippians 2 and 12 and 13. But it's God will put in you right desires and he will give you the power to fulfill them. But it's done all by faith and faith comes only one way. By hearing, getting into the word of God, meditating in it, reading it, listening to it, getting it into your spirit. And then you will have faith to receive the power that you already have available to you to be a son of the living God. He said, as many that have believed on Jesus. He gives you the power, the authority, the privilege, the ability to be 
his son. Sons of God, if you're imitating God, you're love. You walk in love. You're peacemakers. You're merciful. You're kind. You live by faith. You're led by the Holy Spirit. And the list goes on and on. But I feel like my time is up today for this teaching. So if you want to come back and finish listening, I don't know if we'll be on this subject next week. I think it's still, something's still there, but we'll do whatever God says do. But just as we get ready to close, let's just make this confession to get together. Say in Jesus name, I am born of God. I am born from above. I am a son of God. I've been born of God. Therefore, I've overcome the world and its influence. I've overcome the flesh and its temptations and tendencies. I've overcome the power of the devil because I've been born of God. I've been born again. I'm a son of the living God. Amen and amen to all of that in Jesus name. So we thank you again for joining us. Tell somebody about the uh, uploading videos here. And as we get back into a physical meeting, stay in prayer with us. God is ordering our steps and it's going to be at the right time at the right place. And we're going to have standing room only. So you might want to find out where we are so you can reserve your seat, not reserve it, but you know, get there before the seats get filled because we're just believing God is going to do some great things and good things in these coming days because time is winding down. All the dominoes are in place uh, that once they're flicked and they start falling, Jesus' return could be any time. Everything is in place pretty much uh, for the end time uh, things to take place. But there's nothing for a child of God to fear. It's something to look forward to. Somebody say amen. So we need to be about the father's business. We need to be telling others about uh, Jesus and about that they need to get born again about the uh, coming judgment on, on everyone that all are going to be judged for their sins. We can't keep walking by people. So let me pray for you that God will give you boldness and give you utterance on how to witness and shine a light and salt and shake the salt in this that last days so that others can come into the kingdom of God and be made, make Jesus the Lord of their lives and be made and transformed into the sons of God. So father, I pray right now to all those who are listening or will listen to this this video. I ask God that you would equip them and stir them up with a live faith, God, and that you would give them courage, that you would give them wisdom, that you would give them utterance, the right words to speak at the right time to share the good news with those who don't know you so that they too can come out of darkness and into the kingdom of light and be called your child, your son in Jesus name. Let me pray with those who have not made Jesus the Lord of their lives, been born again, if that's you out there, just pray along with me and God will do what he said he will do. We're also going to ask God to baptize with the Holy Spirit because you should and need to be baptized with the Holy Spirit. God's Spirit, God himself comes into this physical body with you, which is a spiritual makeup. And he goes wherever you go to help you, lead you, guide you, remind you of things, empower you to be a witness. Amen. Show you things to come, help you to pray. He'll give you a language called tongues is actually the word tongue mean language. He will empower you to pray prayer, prayers that you in your intellect, in your natural mind, don't know how to articulate or what to say to, to get answers, but he will help you to pray. Amen. So just yield yourself right now, whatever way you can, lifting your hands as a sign of surrender or yielding to God and pray this after me. Say, Father God, I'm a sinner and I see it. I'm convinced of it. I repent. I purpose to change how I'm living, how I'm thinking, my motives, my beliefs, my ideologies. I purpose to change them to match up with yours. I ask that you would forgive me now and cleanse me from all unrighteousness because I do believe that Jesus died for me and paid the penalty, the price for my sins. And I do believe that you raised him from the dead and he lives evermore seated at your right hand. In Jesus name, amen. Now let's pray this, ask for the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Say, Father God, I want everything that you have for me. So in the name of Jesus, I ask you to baptize me, fill me with the Holy Spirit. And as I yield to you, I expect to speak in a language that you give me to speak in Jesus name.
Amen. So take some time after this video, video after you uh, turn it off, get alone somewhere where you can be private and begin to just yield yourself to God by singing songs to God. If you don't know any songs, just begin to thank him and worship him as he's working in you right now, recreating you and making you into a new creation, a son of God, and he will fill you and baptize you with his spirit. So to the next time we come, tune in Thursday. We'll be starting a new series if the Lord say the same. I won't get into it now, but you don't want to miss this one because it's a, it's a good one. Amen. If you want to learn to live before God pleasing and overcoming and, and populate heaven and plunder hell and walk victorious in the planet earth as a son of God, you need to hear this teaching that's coming up Thursday. So remember whose sun sets free is free indeed. So you're set free, not just to do your own thing, but to do the will of God. Find out what that is. Get into a good church. International Word Center is a good church. If we're not in your locale, find a good church to belong to because God has created this thing that we shouldn't forsake the assembling of ourselves together. He's not created us as, you know, an individual that don't need anybody, but he's fashioned us after a physical body. My mind needs my heart. My heart needs my mind. My lips need my neck. My neck needs my shoulders and so forth and so on. So you're set free to do the will of God. So go about planet earth and do the, just that in Jesus name. Amen.